Well everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 and compare it against the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 and see which specific flip phone you should go ahead and buy. Now, personally for me, I've kind of been recommending people to buy the Flip, honestly, to buy neither one of these. I think the S series of the year that these phones come out are probably better than the actual flip phones that come out later in the year. So for example, the Flip 4, I'd probably recommend buying a Galaxy S22 or a Galaxy S22 Plus over the Flip 4. Same as I think with the Flip 5. I think the S23 or S23 Plus are better phones than the Flip 5. And that's just because of the features that those specific phones bring. And if you have to go the Samsung route, I would just recommend going down that route. The folding novelty is fine, but I guarantee you, you're probably not going to be missing much after owning several flip phones. I kind of do think the S series are probably better when it comes down to it. So if you want to pick up those phones, I would recommend buying. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of both these phones, the Flip 4 does have kind of like a dual screen technology to it. You have that cover display on the front, but when you unfold this thing, you basically have that main display. It's a 6.7 inch foldable dynamic AMOLED display, 120 Hertz, very good looking panel. Like I said before, I think Samsung's done a really good job with that type of display. And the fact that it folds and it looks like this is actually very remarkable. I think that's a really cool thing Samsung did. And anytime they do something like this, I'm actually really, really happy because it ends up looking really, really nice. On the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, we have a little bit of a different story. So we have a bigger display on the front, which is actually really nice. So they went from that smaller display on that, you know, cover display on that, you know, Galaxy Z Flip 4 to now like actually like a decent size 3.4 inch display. It's actually much bigger and it's a high resolution as well. And that's something that's super cool. So although personally for me, it's really like not that big of a deal. I'll probably never use it. And it's actually quite nice to have like a display like that. And I actually do think if Samsung kind of changes this display a little bit, like maybe one more time, you could probably just use that front display instead of using like a different display. Like it's actually kind of interesting. But when you unfold this thing, that is when you have that 6.7 inch, you know, dynamic AMOLED display in there too, 120 Hertz. But the brightness apparently does get brighter on the Samsung Galaxy Flip 5 than the Flip 4. So that's something that's really cool that they just kind of threw in there on the Flip 5 compared to the Flip 4. So I think that's a really, really cool thing that we have going on for the Flip 5 as well. They both have USB-C ports on the bottom, no expandable storage on either one of these. And on the back, again, it's kind of like a different type of styling when you th kind of think about it. With the Flip 4, you had that like frosted glass back at the top portion, but then the bottom half was like frosted glass. The Flip 5 is all glass on the top. I do like the look of the Flip 5 more just because you do have that better display on the front and it's bigger, but I think the flip 4 still looks fine like i said i think a majority of people aren't really using that cover display in the first place so you really don't have much to kind of complain about from that standpoint either so from the outside i think both these things are holding up very well i think they were very very unique design choices from samsung and i'm curious to see what's going to be happening in the future but as of right now that's kind of what we're rocking with now in terms of the camera setup there really wasn't that big of a difference you know i would say from one year to the other to be honest they're probably almost the same type of camera they both have dual megapixel, dual megapixel, dual camera setups on the back. They're all 12 megapixel sensors on the back as well, the wide and ultra wide cameras. On the front, you're getting that 10 megapixel wide angle lens. So take it as you will, but this is like another area of this device where I look at and I'm like, okay, like, you know, it's good. You know, I'm glad they kept the same camera, but I don't think they've changed anything really. They can do 4K at 60 on the back, 4K at 30 on the front. And this is one of those areas too, where I feel like once again, Samsung could actually make some improvements, but they just haven't really done that. And that's where I'm kind of surprised at with this type of device is because I feel like, again, when I look at their S series, they do make some improvements year over year over year, but those cameras are just so good that it's hard to make improvements. These flip cameras, they're good, but they're not as great as the S. So I feel like Samsung could be making bigger improvements year over year over year on their flip phones, but they still don't do it, which I think is a pretty big issue and a pretty big problem. So I'm going to be very curious to see what Samsung does with these cameras in the future. When are they going to add another lens? I'm going to be waiting patiently for it. But as of right now, that's kind of what we're rocking with here as well. Good cameras, but you know, definitely the Flip 4 and the Flip 5 are very, very similar when it comes down to it. Now, from the software longevity portion, this is also going to be an area where the Flip 4 is probably not going to be as good as the Flip 5. So we have the display being better on the Flip 5 and the cover display being better, but now the software longevity is also going to be better on the Flip 5 as well. So this is one of those things you're probably going to be getting a phone that's going to be lasting at least an extra year from the Flip 5 to the Flip 4. 
So if you're getting the flip 5, it's going to last an extra year compared to the flip 4. So that's kind of what goes on. That's kind of what happens here. And again, that's just a cool thing. I'm glad Samsung is going through and improving software. I do hope though that by the time the Flip 5 is done, I do kind of hope it does end up getting an extra year of software support. I feel like they haven't changed that in about like two years. So I would expect to see Samsung throw something like that in the future. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen there too. But that kind of covers it up from that perspective as well. Now, from the performance side of things, this is a kind of interesting situation. So with the Z Flip 5, we had that Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip sent inside with 8 gigs of RAM. With the Flip 5, we had that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip sent inside with 8 gigs of RAM inside as well. So you are getting an overall faster chipset on the Z Flip 5 than on the Z Flip 4. So that's just kind of what we expected. That's kind of what happens. And personally for me, I think that's a really cool thing. I'm glad that we're getting a faster phone on the Flip 5, but here's the thing. With the Flip 4, you are still getting a very, very fast phone. Like the Flip 4 is a very fast device and I've had an amazing time with that device as well. Whenever I would honestly do anything with my Flip 5, you know, it was great, it was fast, but the Flip 4 is still a very fast phone as well. And if I'm comparing one phone to the other, I'm not really going to be able to notice those big changes. In fact, even with my Galaxy S22 with the HN1 and my Galaxy S23 with the HN2, I can tell differences in the battery life and everything like that, but from the performance side, I'm not able to tell massive differences from either one. So that's just another thing that's kind of stood out to me as well. Again, not a big massive deal breaker or anything, but it is one of those things that kind of stood out to me at that time as well. So that kind of covers it up from that perspective as well. So battery life wise, you are getting basically the exact same battery from both of these. So 3,700 mAh battery from both of these devices, which again just furthers my claim that Samsung didn't really change too many things between them. Of course, there were things externally and with the chipsets, but other than that, Samsung pretty much put basically the exact same type of device on both of these, and I feel like they could have done a little bit of a better job. And I feel like that's the big thing here. If you already have the Z Flip 4, or if you're planning on buying the Z Flip 4, should you go and buy the Flip 5 or upgrade to a Flip 5? My quick answer to that is absolutely not. It is such a small difference, and you are going to be no you are going to be able to notice even bigger differences by doing other things than going with these devices. It doesn't make any sense at all to go ahead and buy either one of these phones in general, but it doesn't make any sense to go and upgrade from a Flip 4 to a Flip 5 because they are very similar. They're just like the same exact device. Now with the Flip 4, would I even recommend buying that in the first place? Well, much like how I said earlier, not really. I don't think these flip phones are worth it. Until Samsung makes like the exact same phone as a Galaxy S of that year and a you know flipping phone, then that then I would probably you know start recommending that if people want to buy it. Other than that though, it doesn't make any sense at all for me to recommend buying something like the Flip 5 or the Flip 4. You are much better off buying something like the Galaxy you know S23, a Google Pixel 7, those types of devices rather than buying these flip phones just because they're so expensive in my opinion. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button helped me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.